Today is Tuesday, June 23rd, and you are looking at a daily chart of the NDX NASDAQ 100 chart. This is how this presentation will go. We'll take a look at the pre-market activity. There was a little bit of volatility there because of comments from Peter Navarro. And then we're going to look at the main topic of this video, which is the bubble that's being built on the NASDAQ tech sector. We are going to take a look at what happened and what built this bubble in the NASDAQ and what will happen next. Finally, we'll conclude the video by looking at today's market's action and what to look for for tomorrow and the reminder of the week. So we had uh, volatility in the futures pre-market. The Dow Industrial Average was down 400 points after comments from Peter Navarro, the economic advisor, or whatever the hell he does in the administration. He went on a Ferrodian slip and actually admitted that the trade deal was over. The trade deal with China is dead. Over is what he used, but we know it was dead even before arrival. This is not news to us, but it's the first time an administration official admits to the fact that the trade deal is not working. Futures react, it drops to the tune of over 400 points on the Dow futures. And what do you know? The rescue comes right away. The president tweets that, hey, the trade deal with China is intact. Peter Navarro issues a statement to CNBC saying that uh, it was taken out of context and then and the, the trade deal is still there. And of course, we're not little children. We know that the trade deal is over. It's dead. It's not going to happen. Presidential election year, everything is going to happen after the elections, whoever takes the administration. For now, the trade deal is dead. It never happened. All they're doing is they don't want any volatility in the stock market. So it won't hurt the re-election chances. They want to keep peace and cool with China, which is really hard to do, by the way, because China is going to be the topic, the juicy topic of this election because of the coronavirus. So one way or another, you're not going to be able to avoid conflict with China. But for now, they want to keep the cool because they want to prop the stock market. Now to the main topic of the video the NASDAQ and the bubble in the NASDAQ. You're looking at a monthly chart of the NDX that tracks the NASDAQ 100 index. Take a look at this chart and tell me what's wrong with it. I'll tell you what I see. I see three massive candles, monthly candles, green candles, like we have never seen before in the history of the NDX, even during the 1999-2000 dot-com bubble. We haven't seen anything like the move we've seen recently. And I know some of the pundits and the talking head in television are telling you that this is not 1999. It's not as bad as 1999 because the NDX back in 1999 rocketed over 200% from the bottom or from the lows to the top in the tune of 19 months. Meanwhile, we're only 40% up from the lows in the move we had recently so you can't really compare it to 1999 really I'll show you why it is as close as you can get to 1999 because of the magnitude of the movement let me show you what I mean let's take a price tag here to see how big is this move this is approximate of course but let's say we're now at 40 percent move in the tune of three months, we have rocketed 40% in the NDX, the NASDAQ, that tracks the technology sector in the market. Let's see where we've seen this before. Let's compare it with 1999. Here's 1999. And let's take a look. 40% is the equivalent of, from the pop right here, or the bottom, let's be conservative. It's the equivalent of 265%. So yes, it's not as bad as 1999, but it's so close to it. The move in 1999 to the top was 333 approximately. So we're very close. We're there. We're right there. Just because we moved 40% and you compare it with the percentage from 1999, 200%, over 200%, say, oh, it's not as bad as the 1999. 
you're, you're just not doing math right. Now, in 1999, it was a dot-com bubble. Everybody made a website. Every two guys in their garage made a website, put it in the market, and people hyped the gamblers hyped it up. And of course, 99% of these websites don't exist today. But they popped the market to an insane level. The problem with the bubble we have right now is that it is led by the largest companies, the Microsoft, Apple, Amazon. This is why this bubble is more dangerous than 1999 because when it pops it will hurt all the accounts that hold these big companies Microsoft Apple Amazon etc who are these people retirees and average Americans have in the retirement account exposure to Microsoft and Apple and Amazon and all the big tech companies if the bubble burst and these stocks collapse to the downside it's gonna hurt a lot more people than it did in 1999. Here is a daily chart of the NDX. Watch what happened here, the top before the coronavirus crisis and everything got sold out and it was a panic selling, everything sold out, no exceptions. And then we come here to the reflection. And this is important, so pay attention to it. If you're working in capital management or any wealth management fund, you're getting millions and millions of dollars from retirees, from pension funds. Every month, you have to put the money to work. Where are you going to put that money to work? Are you going to keep it in the mattress? Are you going to keep it in the bank with low interest rates, non-existent interest rates? Are you going to buy bonds where the interest rate is going to go negative? Where are you going to put the money to work? This is the biggest dilemma that a lot of people are not understanding and not talking about. The reason why this bubble was built up, and I'll switch to a weekly chart just to show you how big it is. Right here, you see all these green candles. The reason why is money has to go somewhere, and it, if it's not going to go to bonds or to interest accounts, it's going to go to the stock market, and specifically the tech sector. Are they going to put the money to work in airlines? In, in Boeing, in garbage stocks that are being hit by the coronavirus? No, they're going to put the money to work in the strongest names. Names with growth, with strong balance sheets, with a lot of cash. And these companies form the majority of this NASDAQ index. We're talking about Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Adobe. When everybody pours their money into the same names this is what happens you have a parabolic move to the upside because they panicked they sold here and then they looked around like we have all this cash where are we gonna put it we put it back into the names that we liked before the technology names we're only gonna buy them cheaper and here it is and more and more people join because there isn't any other place to put your money to work at right now the big technology names have become the money shelter, the haven, the safe haven for your money. Why? Because any problem that happens, whether it's coronavirus or whatever, think about it. Apple has over a hundred million dollars in hundred billion dollar in cash. They can buy back buy back stock. They can have a lot of other avenues in mitigating the risk of any hit. And so does Microsoft. Microsoft is growing really fast with their cloud initiatives. They have a lot of cash. They have a very strong balance sheet, very little debt. These are the kind of companies you're going to put your cash in. And it doesn't matter. The valuations right now don't matter. The valuations right now don't matter. When everybody has the same mentality of hiding their money where it's safe, this is the kind of move you'll see. Parabolic, does it make sense? But right now, these companies are the money shelter. There are two scenarios of bursting this bubble, how it's going to pop. Number one, the soft pop. And number two, the hard pop, which is probably what's going to happen. Let's talk about the soft scenario first. The soft scenario is, hey, we figured out a vaccine or coronavirus is gone. And now airlines and all the casinos and the cruises and the banks are going to come back to profitability will bounce back and 
money will shift from technology back to these names and a lot of dip buyers will buy the dip and technology from the sellers and will have functioning equilibrium kind of market meaning on this chart you're going to see a little bit of selling consolidation and then the market marshes to the upside in a slower healthier rate however i'm afraid that that's not going to happen because the coronavirus is still with us and it's probably not going anywhere soon and it's only it's only getting worse every time you see the headlines and you read about infections and hospitalization it's getting worse it's not getting better meaning that our behavior will shut down the economy the government need not to shut down the economy again we the people will shut it down because we're scared we're terrified or we're gonna stay at home or we're not gonna consume like we used to before and some stores some businesses will figure out that it's more efficient to stay closed than to open when there are no customers around therefore I don't see a recovery in these hard hit industries by the coronavirus crisis we're talking about the airlines we're talking about cruises the travel industry the casinos and entertainment and banks and the rest of the real estate I don't see a recovery there I don't see smart money shifting from technology to these names yet which leaves us to the second scenario the violent pop here's how it's gonna happen right now let's assume that you held the NDX or the big technology names right here let me mark this for you in 2019 or anywhere in, in, in 18 17 or you bought the dip right here and you recovered everything the market just recovered to the all-time highs and now what are you thinking the smart way is let's sell let's take some profits especially if you bought here let me take some profits but greed and gambling has occupied the market right now and the mentality goes psychologically like this I'm not gonna sell if there's another fool who's gonna buy tomorrow and push the index higher and higher I'm gonna wait I'm gonna wait until I see the first sign of selling and then I'll sell right they're probably not gonna see it happen it's gonna flood down really fast and really hard and they'll panic and sell then it depends on where their entry price whether they're gonna make profits or not but the psychology is basic I don't want to sell if the market's just gonna go up and up every week and every day why would I sell let me give you a personal example this is a chart of PayPal stock a daily chart I have a personal stake in this company and I started building it in 18 and 19 at these levels right here let's say 100 bucks 90 bucks so the stock goes down you buy more and here's the big massive ride to the upside of course PayPal is one of the beneficiaries of the coronavirus environment because they're seeing a huge increase in the accounts and business activities does it really justify the move all the way here I'm not sure because the market cap of this company right now PayPal is over 200 billion dollars that's twice the value of Boeing when you look at the revenue that this company made last year it's only 17 and a half billion let's say they make 20 billion this year or 25 billion does it really justify paying over 10 times revenue I don't think so but I'm a greedy pig why would I sell when I'm just making profits every day when this stock is popping up five to seven percent every week why would I sell my goal is to sell out here 120 130 to make 20 to 30 percent return so I'm just gonna wait I'm just gonna wait and wait and wait I'm gonna wait for somebody to go first and sell their stocks first so the mentality and the psychology in the Nasdaq bubble and PayPal and Microsoft and Apple goes like this you first no no I'm not selling no 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 you go you go first no you go first no you go first and what's gonna happen is there's a headline that's gonna pop out of nowhere whatever headline that would be will cause a little bit of a panic and you're gonna start seeing the waterfall of selling happen and you're gonna see it violently but it don't matter to me because I have my goal at 120 130 it might go all the way down fast I doubt it but it's gonna be a, a very violent and strong correction to the downside
but this is the mentality right now and why we haven't seen bigger corrections in PayPal or the big technology stocks it's because nobody wants to sell if the market keeps going up every day I don't want to sell and usually this is a recipe for disaster because all of us are gonna rush to the exit door at the same time and there is no way to fit us all there and that's why you see this grind up movement it takes a while it takes weeks a month to go parabolically to the upside but it probably takes a few days or a few weeks to correct and flood down and collapse the reason is because everybody rushes to the exit at the same time and this is what will happen when the nasdaq bubble burst now let's take a look at today's market action here's a 15 minutes chart of the spy index the big gap in the morning you know we had the the dip in the futures with the navarro comments but the market rocketed up the dip was bowed the four years there the gamblers were all over the market and they popped the market in the morning it grinds higher and then i'm seeing a lot of talk in television about 1999 and about the bubble and about this and probably a lot of people are getting a little scared right now just a little bit and you see a little bit of selling right here not big not meaningful at all but it's a poor close and that's of notice you have to keep that in mind why did they sell at the end of the day and they never really broke the range that we've been battling since last week they had all the opportunity in the world to push the market all the way where we broke from these levels right here the 323 levels they could have gotten there they could have just rocketed all the way there and closed above it and went all the all the way to, to the marsh to all times high all time highs why didn't they why are they still lingering here what's going on my opinion is it's not positive it's for a negative reason let's take a look at the chart of the dollar index we talked about the big candle here the big red candle that erased two days of work in the dollar index and we said that this is positive for the stock market because of the panicky move to the dollar the demand for dollar is winding down today we had an incl inconclusive day we went down but we reversed a little bit here so could this be just a little mini dip in the dollar marsh to a higher price we'll keep that in mind if the dollar starts trending higher that's not going to be good news for the market because there's more demand on cash versus stocks people are raising cash that's what would tell us we covered Apple in yesterday's video but another look another reminder of the weekly chart it's absolutely ridiculous at this point it's all green candles and just going vertically in one line up something is gonna happen specifically I told you and explained to you before from a technical standpoint would you make a higher high in the chart here's a high let me mark it for you here's a high here's a higher high but on the RSI the relative strength index you didn't make a higher high you're actually making a lower high that's usually not a good sign we still haven't formed the high we haven't reversed here so we'll, we'll watch it we we'll keep an eye on it but let me show another example right here we made a higher high on the chart compared to the highs here but look at where we are at the RSI we made a lower high and then we know what happened the correction right here are we hitting the same scenario lower high in the RSI higher high in the chart we reverse and we go down I'm not talking about correction all the way right here we're talking about a little bit of selling to touch the moving average at least and by the way open the short position on Apple expiring next week it's just a small position it's an opening position we'll see how it works out I might add to it I might change it into a spread it's just an opening position it's a put and we'll see what happens we'll take it one day at a time and I'll construct this trade and tell you what I did with it here is a chart of the VIX the volatility index and I've been maintaining the position that until unless we close below this gap and we crack the blue line where the volatility index goes to its normal range I'm still buying the dips on the VIX 
I'm still buying the dips. Even though it was a big down day for the VIX in the morning, it's actually trending positive in the aftermarket right now. Because I explained to you and I maintained the position that once we have a big pop on the VIX, historically speaking, every time a big pop, a cool off and a gathering of energy for a secondary move to the upside. And the move we're having right now is just too small to complement this large move that we had. This is probably a pop, consolidation, and another pop to form that secondary aftershock that we talked about in previous videos. So overall, the market is looking frothy, or more cautious. Money is starting to look where it would go. Money managers know that the NASDAQ and the technology stocks are getting ridiculous. They're looking for another way, another place to take their money and shelter it. However, once the you go first mentality happens and somebody pulls the trigger and starts selling because of a headline or whatever it is, you're going to see money managers and investors selling their technology stocks aggressively and taking profits, waiting for another dip to buy and take the ride over again. If you find this video helpful, please subscribe, share, and like, and don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Thank you.